Hey Pottery Peeps! So I'm back in the studio. I went and got, uh, this is my Artista wheel that's in the garage that I use for demoing and doing shows with. Um, but I figured, hey, it'd make a great tabletop wheel since I can't get on that kick wheel just yet. I um, had asked on the last, uh, I know there was a video in between, but on the hand-built flasks if you guys wanted to see a wheel uh, thrown version. So that's today. So I'm glad you joined me and let's go ahead and get to it. So I'm just going to center this. This is new to me. I do have a wheel outside that's standing, but um, it's set at a lower height than this is. So and I can't really get up on my tippy toes to do this. So this is a little taller than I'd like, but We'll go ahead and throw a couple of cylinders and then I'm going to throw the spouts. And then it's hand building. Some of my favorite pieces are the mix between wheel thrown and hand building. Yeah, this clay, really, I'm going to get my um, hands exfoliated. <laughs> I can really feel the sand. I'd like to let me know if you guys throw with a groggier clay or you prefer a smoother clay um, porcelain or stoneware. So I'm basically just going to open this up. I did slow down the wheel this because the clay keeps grabbing at my fingers. So we'll see how this goes. I already lost the first one I threw. So, and this is just a simple cylinder, straight up and down. You can make them as tall or as squatty as you want. This is a pound of clay. And I need to slow this wheel down. Alright, I'm going to color this in just a little bit. And then I'll just finish off the cylinder. And then we'll throw a whole bunch more. And then we'll have a whole bunch of flasks or soap dispensers or little vases. Um, and grab a ruler and let you know what that is. So height wise, we are about a fourth and a quarter across on the inside, we're about three inches. So if you want to throw to those, but the thing about these, they're individual. You don't really make sets of flasks. And I kind of like that they're all a little bit of their own. Um, a little bit different, each one. That's what's really cool about pottery is that um, um, everything's got its own little personality, its own little touch. So I'm just taking the slip off of here. And I am going to take this off of here. Just clean it up. Like I've said before, I was taught early on, it's really hard to get those early lessons out of um, having your piece as clean as you can get it when you take it off the wheel. And so, that's what I do. And it sure does make for easy cleanup later. All right, that's one down. So not even gonna bother to cut it off. I'm doing these on bats. So yeah, that groggy or clay is gonna give me issues. <laughs> some spouts on a worked bat. 
Oh, well, actually, it'd probably be good if I didn't have that on before I put the clay on. So this is just another pound of clay. This is super soft clay, super gritty. So, we'll have to see. I like B-Mix because it's fairly close to the feel of porcelain and glazes lay down nice on it and it's smooth without a lot of the issues that porcelain likes to throw your way. Alright, so I'm basically going to throw, throw off the hump. Actually, it might be nice if I... Bat right here. So I'm just going to put a bat up there. Slow down your wheel, especially with this grider clay. It doesn't like a lot of pressure. So, and I'm just taking a little bit of this and just throwing a spout. And this one is a cricket spout. <laughs> so we're just going to take that off. All right, so I'm just gonna make sure I've got that top part. I'm not really concerned about the bottom so much. I'm just working with this little bit on the top. So, and I do have, I usually have one of these for the studio, dip it in the water. And I'll use that as my guide. Since those corks are tapered, it's a good one to use, so I know it'll fit that. Boy, it sucks up the water too. Groggy and thirsty. Hmm. I don't think it'll be good for the students. It's a little challenging. So, so I'll just take my cork and make sure because remember, it's going to shrink. I need to take it off of the... So I just need to make sure that it's going to go in there. And it does. And I messed it up. Which you're prone to do. So now, I'm just going to make a groove where I plan to cut this off. I wonder if this clay is actually too soft. Or sometimes you can take your metal, whoops, maybe not. You take your metal rib and you just go through. <laughs> well, we'll see if we'll be able to save that, maybe not. This clay just tears. So, now I'm just going to make myself another one, put the hole in it. And just throw another little spout. So basically you're throwing all your pieces except for the bottom and the top. And um, We'll put it all together after. You should probably have asked how much this clay shrinks. I know nothing about it. I thought it was B-Mix with sand, but it doesn't feel like B-Mix with sand. The box says Arctic White. It feels like Arctic White with sand. Arctic White is not one of my favorites. Alright, so this one I'm just going to Put my line in there and cut it off. Make sure my hands are dry. And then just lift it off. Sometimes it's easier to throw these with the bottom and then cut the bottom out later because they hold their shape better. They don't tend to fall because you don't have just this tube. 
we'll throw another one. But using that cork is a really great way of getting all your spouts. If you're going to finish them off with a cork, getting them all to be about the right size. See, that's way too big. Even though I know it's going to shrink, I want it to actually fit snug because with the cork being tapered, I know for sure it will fit. Alright, just make sure you put your cork in the, in the water so it doesn't grab the clay. I'm just cleaning that in up on the inside from the cork. Just make ourselves a line and lift it off. And again, I'm actually, even though I made a line, I didn't cut that straight, but that's okay because these are all going to get manipulated. So, might have enough to, to see if I can get this clay to the center. Boy, it's just mushy. Oh, it's like throwing with oatmeal. <laughs> with really sticky oatmeal. oatmeal. So, this one I'll just leave on the bat. I'll go all the way down to the bat. Because I cannot center really small pieces of clay. I just can't. bottom here because I don't want all of that down there. And then join me when we put all this stuff together. But that's basically the pieces and parts for now. <laughs> see you in a, well, see you in a few hours. Alright, I just switched to some reclaim. And we're going to try and this one's stiff. It's gonna give me a workout. But boy, it sure does feels like silk in my hands compared to the sandpaper of that other clay. And this is a pound and a half. So I'm gonna show you another way of doing flats on the wheel. This one I am not going to, I'm going to leave the bottom on it. Basically I'm going to throw a bottle. Sometimes if you um, take your thumb and you scrape that little bit off, it helps you to get your hands under that to be able to cone up. And I know this is reclaimed, so, and probably will have a lot of air bubbles which is another reason why I ended up at a pound and a half. All right. Yeah, but you feel the air bubbles. So air bubbles will probably throw me off a little bit, but since we're gonna morph it, I'm not gonna worry too much about it. But I am gonna do a bottle, so I wanna get tall. So I'm not gonna open up far from the bottom. You want kind of a... Oh, that clay is nice. Even though it's reclaimed. Oh, I miss my kick wheel because I could just slow my wheel down and 
speed it up and I don't have to take my hands off the pottery. So those of you who are new to throwing, it's, to me, I don't like, I teach, when I teach someone how to throw, I actually th show them three or four different ways of throwing, um, of centering the clay, I guess. Not necessarily throwing, but centering the clay. I don't think there's one right or wrong way, there's the one that works for you. So, um, I encourage you to check out other potters that do a really, really good job of, um, and if you want me to do a good job on drawing for beginners, I can definitely do that. But um, I do want my channel to kind of show different things than other potters are doing. So I'm going to kind of belly this out right here give it a little bit of shape all right i do have a lot of clay down there and i could pull it up but i'm gonna take some of it off do one more poll here anyway for throwing Vaughn Smith at West Coast Bell Pottery does an excellent job of um, beginning throwing so does um, Dante from Earth Nation ceramics and they throw completely different the two of them Matthew Kelly is another one so check them out but if you want to see an actual tutorial on centering, I can do that. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to collar this in. Basically, I'm making a bud base, okay? But it can also work as a flask or soap dispenser. So I'm just, and don't worry about the top getting off, that just tends to happen because you're squeezing the clay in, it's getting thicker, and then you're pulling it again. So, this we're going to make into like more of an old fashioned flask, kind of. Early, early 1800s. So I'm just squeezing that together till I get the shape I want. I'm going to square off that top. So don't ever worry about your tops when you're, because you're pretty much most of them need cut. <laughs> And now I'm going to finish my shape. I could also make a closed form this way. So, I want to see where we're at. So we're way too small for this. I need to open that up some more. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it kind of a flare. Using a cork, if you find corks in your area that work size-wise for your pottery, um, sacrifice one for the studio because this is a great way to always get your stuff the way you want it. Okay, so I'm going to give this a little bit of a shape here. I want it to be, think of a flask for a Victorian woman, or maybe not Victorian. Did they drink? <laughs> I'm sure they did. But, uh... Mm -hmm. 
and it's too fast. So, I need to get all that other clay off. That's gotta be the Arctic White with sand. I have to go call Joe and see if I can get some more information. So I'm just taking the slip off of it right now. Just smoothing it down. All right, so now, we'll let that stiffen up too, and I'll show you how to do one out of a bug base. All right, so that's it for now, and then I'll pick you back up after this clay is stiffened up. Um, it's getting late in the day, and the, this clay hasn't dried out enough. It's still pretty super soft. The shine's gone off of it. But I'm probably going to have to cover them and uh, get back to this tomorrow. But this one is ready. And what I kind of want to do with this is I want to kind of push in the bottom a little bit. I'll work on this some more when it stiffens up. But um, I'm going to take these two boards and we're going to flatten it. Let's see if I can show you how I'm doing that. So I'm basically going to take them on each side and I'm just going to round them off like this. Kind of making an oval bottle. And I just keep going back and forth encouraging that clay to do that until I get the shape I want. Try. I want to get it, see if I can get it a little bit sharper on the edges. The boards are too long. <laughs> They're hitting each other. So now, it does tend to buckle your bottom. And so when it gets more leather hard, so I don't push through this, I actually gonna come in with my finger and create a foot and push that in so that um, it doesn't have that much of a problem with it. I don't like the buckle because that's also where it could crack. But by pushing in the bottom, you can also, do this on the table once you get the shape that you want. Kind of round off that bottom to match the oval on top. And I actually might want to wait till it stiffens up a little bit more and I can be a little bit more aggressive, but I want to get that shape in there. And I want to do the shape to where I'm not distorting um, the rim of the um, where the cork's going to go because if I pushed in here if I pushed in the front here it would actually lower both sides of this so I want to kind of keep that there but I want this to be more of an oval shape you don't need the boards you could do it with your hands the boards are a little easier but I always follow up with my hands so I'm going to let that stiffen up now and um, then I'll, we'll get back to it <laughs> after um, it's not quite so fragile and it'll probably be tomorrow I've actually been in the studio more today and I have been in a while and I need to go ice so we'll see you in the morning good morning pottery peeps what a beautiful morning I know you probably think I'm nuts but there was no snow out here last night it started snowing late and uh, we woke up to this and it's still coming down what a great day to play in the studio just love days like this all right here we go all right we're gonna get working on the um had everything covered overnight and we're gonna finish 
these wheel thrown plus today and just oh I love my studio okay <clears throat> I'm gonna start with this one it's still fairly flexible if I push it in it pushes in pretty easy and if you do push in more like on the middle when you're doing this style more than you want you just blow in it and puff it back out but it's um <clears throat> sorry I wanted to show you how I I take up that slack and I push this in and just kind of go around it with my finger and it ends up pushing in a foot kind of like you've trimmed it and it takes care of that buckling from pushing um, the sides together takes up the slack by pushing this in. So it's probably a soft leather hard at this point. So I'll just keep working that until I get it where I want it. And I will, this is what I call thumb trimming. So I just take that edge off. I'm all about no sharp edges. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do with this one. But by trimming that with my thumb and then as it dries, sometimes you have to hit it with a sheer form or um, sometimes your metal rib is your best tool for something like this. And you can even come in and carve in here with a tool to make that foot more defined but it's a little soft to be doing that right now so i'll just go ahead and smooth it off with my finger and then let this set up some more i'll double check my edges i want this <clears throat> i want this edge to be fairly sharp in the sense that that's going to be my most narrow point it's just really um, comfortable to hold this way. So I'll keep working on that. Now we're gonna move to the other ones. Okay, I just went and took some more time and all. I'm bound to determine that I'm gonna get these done today. Oh, duh, the hair. Anyway, got my hair done, got color. So it makes me feel better. At least I've got color and not washing away. Um, so I finished this one i might still tweak it a little bit and i did a i'm going to turn it into a short there's just too much time to make one of these so i did a little tree of life and we'll see if my daughter actually watches my videos um her anniversary is coming up she'll be married six years to my son-in-law ben and they are getting a house this year so i got the little fairy door I got their initials in the tree. By the way, that was Wendy's idea. Um, we wish we had thought of it before. We would have put her initials in her Tree of Life urn. But she thought of it when she picked it up, and it would have been perfect. But anyway, so I'm taking her idea, and I put Ben and Tessa's initials in the tree because they're putting down roots, and um, they're having another little baby in um, June, hopefully on my birthday. Anyway, um, this is for them, for their new house, and also to celebrate their anniversary and putting down roots. So that's what I did with this one. Um, so it'll probably be more of a bud vase. That's probably what she'll use it for. And so now we're going to get to where we are. I've had a slab rolled out with this crazy clay and compressed it really good because it's like falling apart. It's really weird. So we'll see if these flasks actually turn out. Um, also, this is one of my favorite mugs. If you have <laughs> got clay on it, if you want to see how um, this is made, I can definitely do that. Um, this is one where I put texture on in the wheel. And um, so it's completely done except for I um, put my fingers in the foot to give it this little design on the bottom. So, but I love it for coffee because it's got this nice belly and um, this smaller top. And so think of function. It keeps my coffee hotter, longer. 
I don't like cold coffee. Well, I like iced coffee. I don't like room temperature coffee. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Anyway, so let me know if you, and this is just one glaze. This is the Rainy Day by Coyote. I think the design looks like driftwood. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get started. I am going to go ahead and move you closer and lower you down. Okay, broke my tripod, trying to lower you down. So I've got you set up on my um, scale actually, and we'll see if that works. So I'm going to go ahead. I've already cut these off. They, um, oh, might be, oh, yep. Okay, if you wait too long, or maybe it says clay, I am going to miss these guys. Let's see if I can actually save this. This clay is weird. It's really groggy. And I think with the addition of the sand that's in here, it's making it to where it does not want to stick together. So, I'm going to actually set this one aside. Let's pick another one. I'm going to wet the rim. I might actually have to wet these and come back to them. We'll see. We'll see how this works. If it starts to crack. Actually, sometimes I will just go ahead and dip them in water. I do this a lot with um, mugs that might be too dry, and I let them sit. So we're going to do that and come back to it. While that is rehydrating a little bit, I have I've got this amazing stamp. Um, I've had it for years. Look up Tree of Life stamps. It's a wooden stamp and it even has the really cool Celtic knots. So I've just done a medallion with that. And I'm going to go ahead and score this and attach it to one of these guys. And I think I'm going to leave two of them alone and do something either with underglaze transfers or do something cool with glaze. So, sometimes if you've got something big like this, you can add your water. And my water is just clay. It's actually from throwing yesterday. Um, I will just take the sponge and um, hydrate it that way. I am going to... Where's my knife? Where's my knife? This is from throwing. I'm going to cut all that away so it's not quite so heavy because we will be putting a slab base on these. So, the bottom of this is actually fairly nice. I'm just going to set this on here. So I can get an idea of where I need to score. And I'm going to do the same thing with the sponge just because it's faster. And if you get too much on, you just soak it up with the sponge. So it works actually pretty good. Especially for these bigger things. So I need to get my tree on straight. <laughs> right, that looks good. And when you're doing something this big, start in the middle, walk it to the sides, walk it up, walk it down, and then make sure that you're getting all the areas and then I'll come in with my tool here and make sure they're joined. I 
go back with the brush and just smooth about any lines from the tool that you don't want. There will be more cleanup on this later. So I'm going to try now and fix that crack. I might have to add clay. So, yep, let's see, where's... I'm going to soak this a little bit. Not a fan of this clay. <laughs> so basically, you're squeezing it together to make that kidney shape. This is actually turning out to be a little difficult. So if this one doesn't make it, we know no, we know why. But I'm going to take some clay, put it inside those splits, see if we can save it. Pottery is all problem solving. But <laughs> This clay is not good for, well, so far not good for hand building or throwing in my book. Maybe for sculpting? So I'm going to compress that. And even though this inside isn't going to be seen, I still need to finish those off. But this is concerning. I'm worried that we're going to have cracks all throughout. So basically I've made my kidney shape like we did with the with the um, hand-built ones. So these are um, combination hand-built and uh, wheel thrown. Where's my knife? Oh, you know, if you were, <laughs> you'll have to let me know if you're a lot like me where your tools are right in front of you and yet you can't see them. So I'm just gonna cut out my bottom. And then I'll score the edges, just like we did with the hand build. I'm hoping that by um, the bottom and the top of these will keep these cracks from getting wider. We'll get, we'll see if they make it. A lot of times pottery is just <laughs> a prayer. <laughs> But I have found in my, um, all the years of doing pottery, groggy or clay is more forgiving. So even though I've got cracks showing up here, I might be able to save these. We'll see. Okay. I have a wooden... Spoon, and they make great because you can get into those centers and I'm just going to slap that on just to make sure I have a good connection. I'll have to clean that up with a tool here. And then I'm just going to smooth that off. I'm going to address the cracks at the end. 
So you get a twofer, you get to learn how to fix something. This would not work, um, fixing the cracks would not work with a porcelain. Porcelain holds a grudge, remembers absolutely everything. And it might not even work with a B-mix, but then with B-mix I wouldn't have had this issue. So, but I have noticed that when you start using a groggy or clay, Sometimes you have these kind of problems, but a lot of times you can fix them because groggy or clay is more forgiving. Same thing. So we're going to make a closed form just like we did when we were hand building, but I am going to go in and make sure this joint is good. Take your brush, smooth any lines out. Okay. And we'll set that on there. And I am going to do the same thing with the wooden spoon. And once I have the air trapped, then hopefully I can fix all the flaws that are coming up. And then just clean up this joint and then we'll address the others. One thing I've found too with groggy or clay, you can usually work with it. I probably could have worked with it last night, but um, I've been in the studio for a while and my um, knees weren't letting me stand anymore. Dang knees. The wheel is strong, but the body is weak. But today I actually, I feel pretty good. Um, I think I feel better today than I have in a while. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and make some patches on these cracks. And if you want to sculpt something like the Tree of Life, Instead of just do a stamp or design, if you have issues like this, this would be a good way to cover them up with um, a design. So I will um, need to cover this and dry it slow. I'm just going to smooth those where those cracks showed up. I'm going to actually put some in the middle here too. Nothing like filming and showing all the things that go wrong, but then that could be helpful for somebody because in pottery, nothing ever goes perfect. So, Probably why a lot of us enjoy watching those videos where people are failing <laughs> on the wheel. Because <laughs> we've all been there. Doesn't matter how many years you've been throwing, you will have failures. And if you're not failing often enough, you're not pushing yourself enough. I don't know who said that, but I thought it was amazing. So I'll let those sit there. And when they stiffen up some more, I will clean these up more. And I probably will burnish this because it is um, a groggy or clay. But I need it to be leather hard before I do that. Okay, so there is the beginning of our 
flask. We just need to put, I'm going to go ahead and stamp, tamp it down just to make sure. I've got a, well, it does two things. It makes sure that that's even. There's not one side higher than the other. Because even though you threw, you know, a good cylinder, when you start manipulating it, it can change the cylinder. Well, of course it changes the cylinder. All right, so now that looks good. This is one that we threw from last night. I'm going to go ahead and cut the bottom out of it. Really clean up this bottom. Make it thinner. And I will let this one set up before I cut the hole in it. I'm going to score that really well. And I'm just going to dip it. And then I want it in the center. Okay. And since I don't have texture on the top like I did with the dragon, I can just score the crap out of it and then clean it up. And when you're adding something like this, it's good to twist it on. If you get you twist it until it grabs. And then you've got a good, you know you've got a good connection. And with this clay, I don't normally do this, but I think I'm going to add a coil. So I'm just going to do a really thin coil. Man, my coils don't even, they break apart with this clay. So by adding a coil, I can make this transition look smoother. I like it when pieces or people pick up my pieces, especially if I told them it's been thrown on the wheel and they try to figure out how I did it. Because obviously you can tell that even though this was thrown on the wheel, it's been manipulated enough that it doesn't necessarily look wheel thrown. But it's also hard to find out if you did hand building, where's the seams? So I will let this set up before I'm more aggressive in cleaning it up. So I will probably either speed you up or um, turn off the camera and then show you at the end since you know what I'm talking about with all the cleanup and how long it takes.
Okay, since I've got this spout and I'm not going to use it, the spout is um, kind of the shape as a tanker. <laughs> so I'm going to actually roll out a handle. See if we can make a cute little miniature out of the tank. So, if you end up throwing extra, which I always do, this is something cute that you can do for with the spouts. <laughs> So, I'm cute little tinkered. <laughs> anyway, that one had a bottom, so I could do that with it. So, all right, I'm gonna clean up and then come back to them later. I can um, get those pieces, I can shake them out. So, then I'll just blend that in and it is completely done. Now, I will clean them up, make sure they're how I want them. So there's the hole for that one. And the pieces are in there. So anyway, <clears throat> that's it for this time. We've got, I got four here and <laughs> a bonus little tankard. These things are so cute. Um, so, um, thanks for um, staying with me, and um, if you have an idea of somebody you'd like me to um, show, demonstrate, I do know I have a lot of people have requested how I do my birdhouses, and when I can actually get back on my kick wheel, I'll show that. I need, the, I need that wheel for <laughs> making them. They're actually fairly large clothes form. And uh, um, those of you that have um, shared your pictures with me of the ones that you um, hand, hand built, I actually have this guy up here that we did in the hand building one. It's up and dry. In fact, oh, maybe I already shook them out. <laughs> anyway, so it'll go into the this fire next and get these to slowly dry and um, I'll show you what they look like when they're finished. But I think this one's my favorite. I love anything to do with Tree of Life. And uh, I actually really like the way this one turned out. So, anyway, um, thanks again for sharing your pictures and for following along. And we will see you in the next one.